X Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X Play, get your motor running. We head out on the highway with our review of Burnout Paradise. Pro gamer T Squared stops by with Call of Duty 4 tips that will have you bragging with the best. Plus, grab your bean katana. We review Suda 51's No More Heroes. All this and more. It's game time. Welcome to X-Play, the center of the gaming universe. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb, and we are coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Tuesday, January 22nd. On today's show, our fantasies of explosive road rage are fulfilled when we review Burnout Paradise and terrorize the open world environment. Plus, we run down our list of big ones, a few of the games you'll be pre-ordering for 2008. Then we meet the bloodthirsty Travis Touchdown and see if he truly is the world's greatest assassin in our review of No More Heroes. And Pro Gamer T Squared will give you all of the tips to make you the best Call of Duty 4 player in your clan. But first, let's go over to Adam for all of the latest headlines in today's gaming update. Thank you, Morgan. Well, EA has announced Battlefield Heroes, a highly stylized cartoon shooter, and with it, a new approach towards online gaming. As part of EA's new play-for-free business model, the game will be free to download and free to play. Taking on an art style similar to Team Fortress 2, Heroes will feature classic Battlefield gameplay and a built-in matchmaking system that will group gamers based on their skill level. The game will be available for free download on the PC this summer. If you've never heard of Guitar Hero, you probably haven't been to an electronics store since what, 2005. Guitar Hero's addictive rhythm-based gameplay was first introduced to the market a little over two years ago, and in the 26 months since its initial release, the franchise has surpassed $1 billion in sales. Guitar Hero games have sold in excess of 14 million units in North America alone. Ten weeks ago, Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock was unleashed into retail stores, and so far, more than 5 million Guitar Hero 3 songs have been downloaded. I wonder if the free Halo 3 theme has something to do with those numbers. Over the weekend, rumors popped up that the PlayStation 3 version of Chaos Studios' Frontline's Fuel of War had been canceled. New information confirms that the PlayStation 3 version has not been canceled, but simply delayed. While no official release date has been announced, the game is expected to be released later this year. The PC and Xbox 360 versions are currently scheduled for release on February 28th. Gamers with an itchy trigger finger can join the beta for the PC version or test out the Xbox 360 demo. And be sure to tune in to X-Play this Thursday when we go on location to Chaos Studios for an exclusive look at Frontline's Fuel of War. That's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. Join us now as we take a little drive down to Paradise City. I hear the grass is green there and the girls, they're pretty. Here's our review of Burnout Paradise. Welcome back to Burnout, more specifically, Burnout Paradise. Unlike previous games in the series, this one was built from the ground up as a next generation title, and it definitely takes advantage of the hardware. At every turn, Paradise produces visions of vehicular violence that are strangely beautiful. Also new is the interface. Instead of flipping through menus, you'll actually reach different challenges and options by driving to them in the open sandbox that is Paradise City. Race west to the wind farm. Once you master the map, it feels like the way Burnout was always meant to be played. Also, the arcade light controls are still in full effect. You'll hug the road in a satisfying manner despite the fact that you're pulling off precision turns at 300 miles an hour. And of course, you can collect a series of gorgeous automobiles. The Katano Hydra's Custom has been delivered to your junkyard. Thank you. I've always wanted one of those. A couple of slight nitpicks, though. Obnoxious announcer DJ Atomica has invaded the city's airwaves. 
Hey, it's Atomica here on Crash FM. You know, one of the great things about Paradise City is you don't need a garage at your house. Who the hell is this guy, and why does he have to show up to ruin every EA game? This is DJ Atomica, looking out for y'all, here on Crash FM. Also, the new stunt mode called Showtime, it's kinda lame. You can trigger the slow motion mayhem at any time, and it allows you to move the charred carcass of your car to hit others. Sounds fun, but it's almost too easy to keep it going. Imagine if you were driving along in real life and you saw a sentient chunk of metal that could somehow propel itself towards other vehicles as though it were full of magnets. Is this still going on? End already! But overall, this is a perfectly refined version of the high-octane racing we've come to know and love. If you've ever enjoyed a racing game, you owe yourself a one-way ticket to paradise. Burnout Paradise gets a four out of five. After you leave skid marks over every square inch of Paradise City's pavement, what racing game will you be looking forward to next? That's the question in today's X-Poll. Log on to G4TV.com slash X-Play and tell us whether you're anxiously awaiting A, Mario Kart for the Wii, B, Gran Turismo 5, or C, Midnight Club Los Angeles. All right, we're going to have those results later on in the show. In anticipation of Burnout's release, Adam and I went down to Paradise City to see all of the game's changes firsthand. With such a dramatic overhaul, it took a minute for us to figure everything out. Where are you going? I'm trying to get us to a race. <sighs> You're lost. I am not lost. We're just going right here on the map. Ish. Why can't you just admit you have no idea where we're going? Because I know where we're going. You can't, you can't stop at the stoplight. And you have to stop to get in a race. Oop. Sorry. Ah. Sorry. Sorry. Ah. Sorry. Are you drinking? It makes me feel pretty. No, oh, there's no sense in racing now. The car is wrecked. It's cosmetic damage. It's gonna explode. Oh, Any more complaining, you can go right out that door and walk home. Oh yeah, so you can run me over an online Yahoo's gonna do barrel rolls over my corpse? I don't think so. You know, if you keep complaining, so help me God, I am putting us into crash mode. It's called showtime mode now. That's it. Be a racing game. Do I do it again? Sure. Coming up on X Play, T Squared heads into the trenches to share some Call of Duty 4 tips. Then we preview all the mind blowing games of 08. Don't miss our big ones. And later, Assassins Beware. We review No More Heroes for the Wii. Stay tuned. <laughs> Do you think by this time next year, Rock Band will have outsold the Guitar Hero series? Welcome back to X Play. Now let us get out our crystal ball to answer that question. Ooh. Uh, yeah, Guitar Hero has sold, what, 14 some million copies over all the platforms and all the versions, so Guitar Hero is doing well and they have a head start. <laughs> exactly, and as we mentioned earlier today, it's made a billion dollars. And once again, yeah. as, as, as you said, that head start makes all the difference to that. Rock Band is selling very well and had it come out at the same time, who knows? But right now, yeah, Guitar Hero is probably going to have the most sales by the end of the year. Thanks for the question, Amanda. And remember, it's not who wins or loses, but how much the downloadable content costs. Yes, it's great to rock out with your friends, but there's nothing more humiliating than being repeatedly beaten in online death matches. If your buddies have gone prestige 10 times over while you're still struggling to get the 50 caliber sniper rifle, you're in luck. Pro Gamer T Squared is here for a little Call of Duty 4 boot camp. What's up? This is Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor. But you may know me as T Squared. T Squared. I'm a member of the MLG Pro team, Straight Ripping. 
and I got some tips for Call of Duty 4, Call of Duty 4. that will have you fragging like a pro. Call of Duty 4 is all about controlling the flow, and I'll show you how. Unlike Halo 3, you don't want to hide in Call of Duty 4. You want to be the aggressor. Part of being aggressive is sprinting. I'm always holding down the left analog stick to make my guy sprint as much as possible. One map it really pays to be aggressive on is Overgrown. Book it to the cover bridge right away. Aim down the riverbed. When your opponents cross the other bridge, they'll be easy pickings. If being aggressive isn't your style, I'd recommend getting the high ground and raining fire down on your opponents. On the map district, I got a place that no one will ever check. When you're in the back streets, look for the security booth. Next to it are some stairs that you can use to jump onto the roof of the booth. From the roof, jump onto the arch. It may be hard, but I guarantee you can do it. Once you get from the arch to the roof, you'll be like a ghost. No one will ever see you. We taking the lead! Even though picking off stupid noobs from the high ground is fun, try to stay as aggressive as possible, and you'll be king of the kills in no time. Well, thank you, T-Squared. If I get my ass kicked online, I'm blaming you. Now, if you haven't picked up this game yet, you're missing out. And I'm not saying that, so we have some scrubs to take down. Honest. If it's not Call of Duty, what are you buying? Well, let's take a look at today's X list and see what are the top-selling games for the PlayStation 3. Number five is the Rock Band Bundle, despite the fact that Guitar Hero axes are not compatible. Right ahead of that is Call of Duty 4. If only all sequels were as well put together as this. At three, we have Devil May Cry 4, proving that audiences love forkfuls and really pre-orders. Coming at number two is Burnout Paradise, which we just gave a four out of five. You won't be disappointed, and it's available tomorrow. And beating it for the top spot is another unreleased racer, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. Despite its status as an extended demo, no one can argue that the game doesn't look amazing. When X-Play returns, we unveil our list of big ones, a few of the big games of 08. Find out what you'll be trading in your collection for. But first, let's take a look at today's leaderboard from the PlayStation Network's Super Stardust HD. Every year, on a winter's day. Welcome back to X-Play. Now, earlier in the show, we asked you what race team you're looking forward to most. So far, the leader is Mario Kart at 42%. Not a huge surprise. Followed by Gran Turismo 5 and Midnight Club Los Angeles. Now, after the glut of good games that came out at the end of last year, it's hard to imagine things can get better. Let's sneak a peek at what's going to dominate in 08 and take a look at our big ones. That's what she said. Yes, I did. Two thousand and eight dawns with the collection of titles we've been waiting to get our hands on. They are the big ones. Our first colossus straining at its change is Ninja Gaiden 2. Ryu Hayabusa seems placid as a falling blossom. One his enemy reaches for only to find their hand twitching on the floor. With some of the most advanced combat mechanics in gaming, Part 2 promises more of everything the ninja does well. The mailman of Muerto will now have body parts to feed his hungry blade. Naturally, there's plenty of scarlet fluid to wash it down with. If your combat leans on a weapon with softer edges, then let Nintendo roll out its trademark titans for that mythic battle known as Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Morphing battlefields dimensionalize familiar locales as you fight skyward through character-specific attacks and specials. New characters are revealed, taking on old faves. Speaking of old, hey Snake, I thought you were dead. Showtime! That's right, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots will be locked, loaded, and rolling into a store near you. Snake's been called out of retirement for one last hit on No Es Bueno, Liquid Ocelot. Guns of the Patriots will ship with heightened enemy detection, combat and avoidance moves, and a story spanning South America and the Middle East. Snake also has a new battery-powered little buddy known as MK2. Adorable. 
As controversy cools on the stovetop of gaming, a familiar hand reaches for the heat. Rockstar's new Clerks of Chaos will be the Eastern Europeans headed by main character Nico Belli. The little we've seen leaked by Rockstar promises a Liberty City with the next-gen facelift. Nico will be pursued through four vast boroughs, but will always be willing to bring death right to your door. All right, I'm sure most of you are already opening up your wallets to reserve these games, but before you rush out to your local Conglomo Mart, stay tuned. We're going to be back in just a minute. Still to come on X-Play. Suda 51's latest hack and slash comes under the microscope. We review No More Heroes for the Wii, and it's about to get messy. Video games are evolving. So are we. Introducing the all-new X-Play, next, only on G4. If you think all batteries are the same... Pretty much. Welcome back to X-Play. Regardless of whether you like Killer7 or not, there's no denying that the game is unique and over the top. Punk game designer Suda51 is back with another tale of assassins and ultraviolence. This one is called No More Heroes, and here's our review. There's something like a light around here. It's everywhere in this malignant town. Bright enough to find that little part of everybody that belongs in hell. A place to die. Welcome to Santa Destroy, California. Your guide, a sadistic skinny slob that wants to crudely claw anything in range of his underdeveloped libido. If I become number one, will you do it with me? But there's something you just gotta love about this guy. He's Travis Touchdown, and he's got a story to tell. For those of you who played Suda51's Killer7, you'll know that the playing field for No More Heroes will be from a dimension wildly different than our own. This time around, though, Suda has left behind the incomprehensible story and rigid rail system that made Killer7 rough around the wound's edges. The world of No More Heroes is an open one. The town of Santa Destroy offers a trembling fistful of interactive eccentrics, all willing to keep Travis busy upgrading his skills and doing very odd jobs. The story is, Travis must take down a number of assassins that rank above him in order to gain status as top death dealer for hire. He's seductively and financially motivated by a suspicious piece of French lace and poison that appears after each conquest to clean and tell Travis of his next opponent. The assassins are beautifully mortal wounds, formed by a body of imaginative villainy. From American Wastelands to Hentai, these characters bring impressively developed oddity and true intimidation to every showdown. Game mechanics are solid as Travis develops his lethal abilities to better landscape the bone and tissue confronting him. If your sword's a little limp on power, you can always take a familiar cue and engorge it with... Energy. Yay! One of Travis's tactics has him responding to a directional cue. Nail it and get a slot machine that delivers you a punishing payout. Death is hilariously over the top. Bodies collapse in sections, heads pop like release balloons amid the symphony of screams from larynx free throats. Travis plays sweetly on these organs. The moans are applause. We love Suda and the imaginative commitment to no more heroes. You mind if I ask you something? Yeah, what is it, Mr. Cosplay? From the brown zap dropping humanity of same points, hmm. to the incredible character, story, and fight mechanic. This is the end. We give no more heroes a five no. out of five. Now it's time for our X Play replay. On today's show, we review Burnout Paradise. This sandbox racer features some stellar controls and satisfying arcade gameplay. Eight player multiplayer and a huge and varied soundtrack and beautiful crash animations. That all helps Burnout Paradise cross the finish line with a four out of five. <laughs> 
And if you're just tuning in or you're that guy from Memento, we also reviewed Suda51's No More Heroes. Travis' touchdown kills and maims his way into our hearts with satisfying gameplay and a unique style all of his own. And if you've ever wanted to see people explode into a fountain of blood and coins, this game is for you. It's almost like a plasma pinata. No More Heroes earns a 5 out of 5. All right, that's it for today, but X Play will return tomorrow night in prime time. That's 8 p.m. Don't miss it. On our next episode, we'll show you how to be an achievement whore and tell you which games score you an easy thousand, and more importantly, we tell you which ones to avoid. Plus, get some turn based action on the go. We take you on location for a look at Advance Wars Days of Ruin for the DS. And we'll get some FaceTime with the head of NCSoft and find out about their plans for Sony, Tabula Rasa, as well as the latest on City of Heroes. And further down the road, we've got all the coverage of the Game Developers Conference that you could ever want. X-Play will be on site to get you every detail on the latest gaming innovations at the first big gaming event of the year. We'll have exclusive interviews, breaking news, and all the highlights of the keynotes. So if you want to know anything and everything about GDC, tune into X-Play starting on February 18th only on G4. All right, well, that should definitely be exciting out there. We're going to have a lot of say. information for everybody. We're going to see what's coming up. We're going to see about the new technologies that we're going to be seeing. It's going to be something that any gamer cannot miss. Now, I think the other thing we should note is that I think No More Heroes is our earliest 5 out of 5 of the year. So, it's exciting. Thanks for watching.